to the Princeton Packet and the Trenton Times, and the notice for the meeting went up with the uh, instructions for the electronic participation on Friday. Excellent, thank you. Do you want to the flag to the flag of the United States of America, and as to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Do we have any public comment this evening? Is there anyone that wishes to speak in public comment? If so, please unmute yourself. If you're on a phone, you have to hit star six. I believe there's no one that wants public comment at this time. Okay, thanks, Gary. Administration comment. Public works crews are working in zone four this week. And the only other announcement that I have deals with a road project that Mercer County is undertaking in honor of about June 24th between Clarksville Road and Rabbit Hill Road. Milling and resurfacing will be done. Um, and that work will be done weather permitting. It should take approximately two weeks to complete. During construction, Cranberry Road will be closed to through traffic from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Monday through Friday. Motorists will be, will be detoured using Clarksville Road, Princeton Heights Town Road, and Rabbit Hill Road. Local access will only be permitted for residents and municipal service delivery. Normal traffic conditions will resume outside of weekday work hours. And please honor all temporary traffic control measures for your safety and the safety of others. That's all I have. Thanks, Dr. Uh, uh, as some of you know, the uh, investment center of Township along with Zima has uh, arranged for pre COVID testing. Uh, the first uh, set of tests were performed last Saturday. About 158 people participated. Uh, the next set of tests and the last three tests is scheduled tomorrow between 8 a.m. and noon at the Westminster Community Park. Uh, I encourage everybody uh, to get tested and still you don't need to have symptoms. You don't need doctor's prescription. Uh, you can either drive through or walk in and my group of tests that says walking is a lot quicker and easier. So I will get tested tomorrow and I have to see uh, some of you there. Uh, on a Saturday note, I just want to uh, report that Gary Tindall, who was the uh, president of the Westminster uh, Volunteer Fire Company, passed away recently. He was a member of the fire company for a long time and a resident of Westminster. He served as the chief from 1991 to 1996 and again from 2001 to 2004. He also served as deputy and assistant chief and enjoyed designing fire trucks and teaching home operations. A lot of our fire trucks have his mark on it as he was a part of the design team. I met him a couple of times at the uh, community day at the community park and we had a lot of education on weather and fire, fighting operations, etc. It was always a pleasure to talk to him. So our condolences to his family. Thank you. Okay, Council members. Okay, Council members. Okay, Council members. Condolences and sympathy uh, to the Timber family. He's a wonderful man, volunteer, community member, so uh, certainly will be missed. The uh, Black Drive at the Township held uh, last Wednesday, June 17th, uh, was a success. Uh, 20 units of blood were collected by the Millstone 
the Keystone, by the Miller Keystone Blood Center. Uh, I worked on this project with health manager Jill Swanson and senior senator and senior center manager Donna Rizitola. Um, I thanks to both of them and to all the staff members and members of the public uh, who donated blood. Just it's a big blood shortage right now and uh, a little bit helps. Uh, the township is also going to have another drive at the American Red Cross on Thursday, July 16th from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Westminster Senior Center. And information on uh, signing up is on the front page of the municipal website. I also attended a peaceful rally at Community Park on June 13th uh, for the horrific death of George Floyd. I hope that our nation can come together to make the necessary changes for social justice and for the fair and equitable treatment for all. Thank you. Sonia? Um, I also want to uh, <clears throat> give my condolences to the Tindu family. Um, wanted to uh, congratulate all our graduates who graduated uh, on Friday, be it um, graduating from elementary, middle school, to high school, this surely, uh, this year surely goes down the history lane. Um, I do um, wish good luck to all our seniors for their future. Um, the other thing I wanted to um, um, say is I actually this past week attended um, on a Zoom call, or was it a Google Meet call, with Mrs. Wackton, a middle school teacher at Grover for sixth graders. Um, she had invited um, bunch of us to attend for our classes presentation around um, building projects. Um, they took a problem uh, project and the students had solutions to their solutions, their ideas, and it was really interesting to see the sixth graders coming up with um, such um, ideas. I myself have a new sixth grader now and I can't imagine my, my kid having those thoughts and Hearing that just got me really excited about future. That's it for me. Thank you. Andrea? <laughs> I'd like to thank Linda and staff members for bringing the blood drive. I'd also like to offer the condolences on the uh, passing of Fire Chief Kendall. Um, I also did uh, attend one of Mrs. Wackel's uh, classes. And it was a lot of fun reviewing the projects that kind of reminded me of some of the robotics projects. And um, I think I may have volunteered to do some other projects somewhere as part of that. But, uh, uh, but it was um, really impressive to see the uh, environmental uh, designs and things that they came out with in very short notice. Oh, they, they, uh, they mentioned biodiversity. It was, yeah, they did the biodiversity. What they, what they did was they attempted to look at a project that would come before the planning board and come up with a way of having more biodiversity and possibly less land that had been taken over by the housing components. So, and, and then afterwards we had a whole discussion about what West Windsor does with some of those things and, and, and a lot of the things that they were really surprised that West Windsor actually looks at a lot of these environmental issues. So, um, I think it was a good time. I also attended the student-run vigil on June um, 13th in Community Park. I want to thank the uh, students and speakers for their heartfelt comments throughout this peaceful and people are practicing safe social distancing and wearing masks when they're close together. A uh, big thank you to the police who showed the usual wonderful community policing capabilities. Um, as we had said in our resolution, last meeting, this is about love, not about design, uh, the, the education and experience and the examples of the upper uh, police to the, um, to the newer police uh, brings us this type of community policing that is so successful. The, uh, students at this um, vigil decided to do an unplanned march They took a wrong turn on some busy streets and the police protected them, blocked off traffic, everybody was safe. So it was a great pleasure to receive a thank you note from the uh, African American Parent Support Group uh, for the help of the town and the police to make this a successful and very safe vigil. Sunday was yoga day, and I attended the yoga event, which emphasized the importance of mental health, especially in these kinds of COVID times where we've been seeing 
increases in not only regular mental health issues, but abuse and other uh, things that happen more when people are stuck together in the house. So I'm asking everybody to be kind to each other. If you need help, please get it. And in case of a real emergency, let's not forget that police are also always willing to help. And stay safe out there. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I also want to send my condolences to the Tyndall family. I was lucky enough to serve under Gary um, in the Westman's Volunteer Fire Company. He's um, truly going to be missed. Uh, just a wonderful man, uh, just to share everything that he knew with everyone. Um, wonderful resource. Um, and I had a chance to work with him on the farm. Um, he resurrected my tractor on more than one occasion when I thought it was gone for good. Uh, had a wonderful knack for things mechanical uh, as well. And so uh, we're all going to miss um, Chief Gary. And uh, there will be a memorial service at some point in the future. We don't have the details on that yet. There are some wonderful memorials that have shown up on Facebook and some other social media. Uh, there's a video presentation that you can watch. and. Uh, just learn a little bit more about, about the man. On June 19th, I attended the Juneteenth celebration that was held in the community park. It was the first Juneteenth celebration in Westminster, we believe. Um, very well attended, uh, quite a diverse group of people. Uh, it was a candlelight vigil. The wind did not cooperate with our candlelight vigil. <laughs> it took a while to try to get the candles lit and finally just gave up on that. But um, very nice ceremony. Uh, names of some of the you know, people who lost their lives were read as part of that. The history of Juneteenth was also a part of that celebration, so people would understand where it came from, what it's meant since uh, 1865. The, uh, the first uh, Last thing I wanted to just follow up on what the mayor said. We do have the uh, testing that's taking place tomorrow. Uh, from 8 till noon in Community Park. As you drive into the park, uh, just drive beyond the first parking lot at the swimming pool, you'll see a large flashing sign, and you'll see a large fire police guy theme standing there uh, directing you in. Uh, the test is a very easily administered test. You give it to yourself in the car, or you can walk up, just park in the parking lot, and walk up to the tent. Uh, you may not be able to see this on the camera, but that's a good thing. This, this is how small the squad is now. And so you may have heard some stories about people with previous swaps that were used a couple of months ago. Uh, it's very easy, no pain, no fuss, um, and the results are uh, turned around very, very quickly. And it's just a, a wonderful opportunity that I hope everybody can take advantage of. Great, thank you. And my understanding, Mike, is that these um, tests for the acute illness are very good now in terms of reliability. Yes, it's just part of PCR. It's a, it's a um, chain polymerase test. Um, and so if there's virus there, it multiplies it and then reads it. So um, it's, it's very sensitive. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Uh, I also wanted to add my condolences to the Tyndall family as well. And I um, believe Gay has some things that she would like to say tonight. Yes. Um, I, too, would like to give um, my condolences to the Tyndall family. I actually I've known Gary since we were in the fourth grade and graduated together from high school, so it's, it's a deep loss for me in a lot of ways. Um, on a higher note, the primary election will be held on Tuesday, July 7th from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Voting districts have been consolidated as requested by the Mercer County Board of Election. Please check the township for these consolidations. Voters who choose to go to the polls will vote by provisional ballot. Please see the Township website for further details. The Township Council is going to start holding council meetings with the public, hopefully starting on July 13th at the West Windsor Senior Center Activity Room, unless the guidelines are changed again. We will continue to use the free conference call system for residents who are not comfortable attending in person. Please see the web posting for the July 13th meeting for details, which will be posted no later than July 10th. Thank you. Uh, and I just want to add, with regard to um, voting, when you get your mail-in ballot, everybody's getting a mail-in ballot. If you're registered in private republic. Right, if you're, if you're registered. Um, so when you get that, fill that out and send it in, because um, 
much better to do it that way than to show up and do a provisional ballot. Um, they're just you know handled differently, and I think it's it's a, a better bet for you to make sure your vote is kind of counted if you do your mail-in ballot. Um, in fact, Republicans and Democrats are getting mail-in ballots, and I believe both by mail requests are going to independents. Yes. Like, so if they don't fill out a vote by mail request, can they show up to the poll and then select a party, or will they have to vote provisional? Also? No, they can. They can select a party and vote the, provisional. And the only people voting in the machine are those with handicaps. Okay, and they so will have to sign a declaration that they are handicapped, which is the normal procedure right, in, the, in the election. Okay, so it will be provisional vote even if you're an independent. Yes. Right. It's basically all paper. Right. Have we finalized the physical locations? Yes. Um, West Winter Senior Center, the Princeton Junction Volunteer Firehouse, the Mercer County Boat House, and Mercer Oaks. We stayed with all um, county and township facilities, as was the request. So there will be multiple, um, and that's all posted on the township website as well. And everybody is supposed to be getting a card telling you where. Um, and I will be posting on those locations that aren't being used this time where you're supposed to go to vote. So if someone goes to like the West Windsor Firehouse, which you normally has two districts, they will be told where they're going and off the top of my head. I don't want to say it because I don't remember, um, but I tried to do it location-wise so nobody was going too far. Thanks for your work on that. I know it was uh, not much. easy. Unplanned and, and a lot yeah. of work. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay, uh, moving on to public hearings. 2020-12, an ordinance amending the redevelopment plan for the Princeton Junction by modifying the RP1 district. All right, I'd like to open the public hearing. Do we have any comments on 2020-12? Hold on, they're saying they can't hear anything. Welcome, and thank you for choosing freeconferencehall.com. You're helping people around the world communicate for free. There are nine participants in the conference. Please announce yourself. Mr. Wazinski, can you hear us now? modifying the RP1 district public hearing. Is there any public who wishes to speak on this ordinance? Yes, hear none. Okay, yes. hearing none, we have a motion to close the public hearing. So moved. Second. I'm oh, sorry, it was first. Linda Mesa. Linda Linda Okay. Gawas? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Mandel? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Manzara? Yes. Let me just make sure they are here. Yes. Yes. Dennis, can you hear me? Hello. Hello, can you hear us? Hi. 
Yeah. Yep. We're in the middle of a public hearing for the redevelopment. Did you have public comment? Yes, I do have a public comment. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. We went to this room. Okay, go uh, ahead. Can I talk? Yes, please do. And can you please say your name and address for the record? Camilla Octop, 109 Hanbury Road, Kenton Junction. Okay, go ahead, please. I, I want to inquire about the second phase of the sidewalk. We've been waiting. We have actually been advocating this for about seven years now. And we got half of it done, but the other half has not happened. Uh, most of the people who did advocate the sidewalk are without sidewalk. So um, I just wanted to understand what is the timeline we are looking at. We were told that by the summer we will have that sidewalk. So I just, I'm just calling in to uh, understand what's going on. Thank you. Um, I think we're having a little bit of technical difficulty because that we probably didn't hear her during the public comment section, the general public comment section. Let's go back to do public comment and we'll go into the public hearing. Sure, we do that. Absolutely, we do that. Thank you, Samara. Okay. Alright, thank you. Yep. Bye. Thank you. We'll, we'll get an update on that and get back to everybody with that. Yeah, Mr. Charge, charge, do you this, want to speak? This, this is the Granberry Road one? Yeah. Right there, right. 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 I thought it was made to, that's why I didn't forward it. I thought you could forward it to them. Because, to who? Because he made it to you. Yeah, yeah. We, we also uh, have the other uh, thing. Uh, uh, I thought you would forward. That's why I didn't forward to anybody. Because you asked the question, it was addressed to you. So that's why I didn't forward. But there's a, uh, you can forward or I can forward. There's an answer to yeah. those questions. Uh, usually, uh, if I remember right, we'll probably go to a uh, bid out in September, sometime in September. So you're looking at late September bid. Yeah. Uh, so I don't remember getting that. Um, well, I, I think they forwarded an email. Um, I had a question to Francis and we got some answers on that. Okay. Yeah, I think she moved forward, that's why I didn't forward. Going out to bid in September. And then what is usually our timing once things go on to bid? Well, no, after the bid it's much faster because then the contract is done. The timing is getting easements and then the corner house is really tricky because people are putting the shrubs and other things in last three four years. Okay. So okay. So before we go into bidding it's when all the easement and all of that the bidding came yeah. up. Yeah, that's the delay right there. Well, that's it. assuming that there were no issues between the property owners and the township. Right. Um, if you recall, it took almost two years oh. to get easements from some of the property owners in the first phase. Right, right. Yeah. Is it easier to afford Francis's? For a Francis family, family. Family. they got the whole picture. Just send it on to them. Can I email Francis's um, response? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right, so if, um, can we post that? So, if you can understand the whole. So, right. Right. if you're still on, online, um, I can email you um, uh, a update that we see from Francis. Sure. Yeah. Okay, all right. Is there anyone else who would like to speak uh, public comment wise? Just general things? Mr. Church? No, I okay. Mr. Wazinski? Okay. Thank you. Is there someone trying to speak? I can hear something. Maybe mute your. If you're not going to speak, please mute your. Uh, so we don't hear the back beat. We're not sure if somebody's trying to keep through. Okay. All right. So, so heading back to the yep. public hearing for okay. Getting, yes, the ordinance um, 2020-12. We had a motion to close the public hearing. We all voted on that. Now we need a motion to adopt 2020-12. So, second. Dawes. Yes. Jeevers. Yes. Mandel. Yes. Stevens. Yes. Manzara. Yes. Okay, um, 
2020-13, an ordinance to amend and supplement Chapter 200, Section 260, RP1, District of the Code of the Township of West Windsor, amending the RP1 district standards. Okay, and I'd like to open the public hearing. Does anybody wish to speak on this ordinance? 2020-13. Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So Second. Yes. Yes. Evers. Yes. Mandel. Yes. yes. Stevens. Yes. Mandera. Yes. And a motion to adopt, please. So Yes. Yes. Stevens. Yes. Mandel. Yes. Stevens. Yes. Mandel. Yes. 2020-14, buying ordinance providing for various capital improvements in and by the Township of West Windsor in the County of Mercer, New Jersey, appropriating $6,822, right, $6,822,300, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $6,497,000 bonds or notes to the Township to finance part of the cost thereof. Okay, I'd like to open the public hearing. Does anybody wish to speak on 2020-14? Any member of the public wish to speak on 2020-14? Okay, hearing none, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So Second. Gawas? Yes. Jeevers? Mandel? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Manzara? Yes. Motion to adopt? Second. Who's the answer? Who's the motion? Linda, thank you. Galvez? Yes. Jeevers? Yes. Mandel? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Manzara? Yes. Hold on just one second. I'm trying to figure out who's not, who's not muting that we're hearing. I think I just made. Nope. So if you're listening from home, please mute your computer or your phone. Yeah, I don't see any other stuff by now. Okay, I think I got it. Okay, thank you. Sorry. 2020 15. Bond ordinance providing for general improvements and required upgrades to the swim pool complex in and by the township of West Windsor in the county of Mercer, New Jersey, appropriating $50,400, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of 48,000 bonds or notes for the township to finance part of the cost thereof. And I'd like to open the public hearing for 2015. Would anyone um, at home, listening in, like to comment on 2015. Mr. Church, I see you unmuted. Okay. Okay, here we go. Do I have a motion to close? So I'm hearing. Second. Yes. Yes. Manda. Yes. 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 And the last one. 2020-16 capital improvement ordinance provided for various capital improvements and other related expenses in or for the Township of West Windsor County of Mercer, State of New Jersey, appropriating the amount of $410,000. Okay, I'd like to open the public hearing for 2020-16. Would anyone like to make a comment? See anybody unmuting? Hearing none, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. Gawas? Yes. Stevens. Yes. Manda? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Manzara? Yes. And a motion to adopt, please? So moved. Second. Gawas? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Manda? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Manzara? Yes. Okay. On to the consent agenda. Uh, bills and claims. The motion to approve. So moved. Second. 
Fawaz? Yes. Severs? Yes. Nandana? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Ms. Eric? Yes. All right, recommendations from administration and council. Would anybody like anything to pull? Uh, 2020-R-132 and 2020-R-138. Okay, I'll read the 2020-R-127, authorizing the mayor and clerk to execute a professional service agreement with act engineers to continue environmental monitoring and compliance reporting for groundwater at the remediation of the former West Virginia Township landfill compost station for $8,000. 2020 R-128 authorizing the insertion of a special item of revenue into the 2020 municipal budget from Sustainable Jersey Grant funded by psc and Foundation for $10,000. 2020-R129, authorizing the insertion of special item of revenue into the 2020 municipal budget from the State of New Jersey Law and Public Safety for Body Armor Fund, $4,528.86. 2020-R130, authorizing the insertion of a special item of revenue into the 2020 municipal budget from the State of New Jersey Alcohol Education Rehabilitation Enforcement Fund for $583.48. 2020-R131, authorizing the business administrator to purchase replacement network firewalls and disaster recovery storage upgrades, installation, and configuration services from CDW government through state cooperative purchasing program in the amount of $43,060. 2020, granting an additional extension of reservation of sewer capacity for the project known as Woodstone at West Windsor, PV 17-08. 2020-R134, authorizing the full release of performance guarantee 1052 in the amount of $10,700. $98.20 and obtaining the full amount of performance guarantee uh, $10.53 and the amount of $9,476.55 and the reduction of cash performance guarantee from $2,252.75 to $1,052.95 for the project known as Ellsworth Realty Building N3 and N3 Site Work. ZB 13.01.3 and ZB 13-02 in the amount of $19,025.98, cash in the amount of $2,112.20, and cash in the amount of $1.80 for the project known as Ellsworth Realty Building N4 and N5 for private site improvements ZB 12-01.1 and ZB 13-01.2. 2020-R136, authorizing the reduction of cash performance guarantee to 16198 for private on-site improvements for the project known as Honeybee Day School, PD 15-04-8. 2020-R137, authorizing the health officer to execute a grant agreement with the New Jersey Association of County and City Health Officials to receive funding for COVID-19 in the amount of $34,114 based on population. Thank you, Dan. All right, can I have a motion to approve 2020-R27 through R31, I'm oh, sorry, 131, and R133 through 137? So moved. Second. Hollis? Yes. Jeeva? Yes. Mandel? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Manzari? Yes. And I'll go back to 2020-R132, authorizing the mayor and clerk to execute amendment number one to the affordable housing agreement with Princeton Baptist Church. Okay, Linda, you have some questions there, some discussion? Um, I'm 2020-R132 uh, regarding the affordable housing agreement with the Princeton Baptist Church. Um, I guess I was sort of surprised that this was on the agenda because I don't, I don't think that we had any prior discussion to this agreement coming up. Um, and I don't believe that the Affordable Housing Committee has seen this. Uh, we haven't met for 
for months, you know, just because of the virus. Um, and it, it's just, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of changes here, but certainly if there's a cash flow issue or something, we can work with them, the township engineer can work with them if they're not getting enough money quick enough, it's that kind of problem. Um, but, but the money that we increased, 250 to 295 by a resolution back in uh, February, I believe, uh, was supposed to be for, for the building. We wanted to make sure that they had enough funds for completion of the project. So, so we got the amount to 295. Now it appears maybe there'll be extra money. I, I don't know exactly how far along they are in the total completion of this, but I was a little surprised that they were coming back and saying that they want to specifically include, but not limited to, landscaping, fencing, and paving. That those things were not anticipated in the original proposal. Proposals for the building to renovate like just about everything, you know. Building. And, and that's okay. All of a sudden, we're, where you might have extra funds, which, which we kind of maybe approved too much, but I always, I guess, kind of assume that whatever is left over, we just stay before the housing trust fund. We just want to make sure that they have enough money, um, you know, to do the architect's plans and to fix the buildings and get all all ready for the new people to move in. So. Um, I, it, it's, it's very vague, and all of a sudden, landscaping, paving, and this and that is being added in here. And I, I thought, you know, if you're at the end of the project, and you say, we have 20,000 left over, and pick any number you want, I don't know what it's going to be in the, in the end, then could we use some of that money for something else? They're asking us for that. I would have thought that a request like that would come in when it's more or less done all the work. Okay. Right. So having leftover money at the end and saying, hey, can we keep this and spend it on the tax? Yeah, I, I just was very uncomfortable because the scope has always been um, on, on the building. And, that, and that's even, you know, juries, memos, um, it's for the renovation of the building. Yes, it's, it's, it's other things. Yeah, I mean, again, these questions came today, so I didn't get a chance to talk to anyone and get answers. We are not adding any more money. Uh, there was some discussion about another program that allowed them to use money for AC, and I'm really trying to remember. There was some discussion about that we didn't. We did. There, there is a program in effect whereby residents who are in affordable housing units can get up to eight thousand dollars to um, upgrade their HVAC equipment. However, this project is not eligible for that. Now, and there was some discussion about that. Right? We, we remember that. Yeah, I mean, I, this came at last minute, I would have asked those questions. The, we are not giving them any more money. We just, what are 295 that was approved is 295 that maximum they are going to spend. If I read Jerry's memo correctly, it's just a difference in schedule of payment, not increasing the payment. Uh, the money was meant to make that house Leave it at one to the right. And that's, and that's hard because the, the original scope of the project, that's what it was. Even when we approved the additional 45000 to go from 250 to 295 that was okay. We just want to make sure that there was enough money um, to get it done. But, but now it looks like there's extra money. Yeah. They're, they're asking to do a lot of other things that are not specifically related just to the building. That was what the agreement was about. Right. Uh, I'm looking at, at the repair scope that they prepared, and it came up with a total of $292,525, which is approximately our $295,000. And there's a little bit in there for unseen damages um, and a couple of other little extras. And if somebody came and told me that, you know, doing the, um, removing the hooks for some reason, or a hook that was $50 is now $55, so you're moving something 
else to, to do that because there was a change in the price of something in the repair. So I don't know have an issue with that. I don't think anybody would have an issue with moving something around within the scope. But it sounds like um, this, this particular number is possibly, we're not sure how much, over, over what they may actually want to spend. It. And now they're saying, well, we can do the job for number 275,000 discovered. We added it all up to do the job that we um, put in our repair scope. But now there's another $20,000, so we want a job that we um, put in our repair scope. But now there's another $20,000, so we want to fix the parking lot or something. And that, I don't think, was within what the council had approved. But parking or fixing, I remember that was always part of the Project. It's not part of the project in here that I see. So that is discussion about and, and this, and this, and this awesome. total number is basically what we have approved. So it's not on the list. Right. It's a list here which adds up approximately to the total number that the council had approved, which was forty five thousand dollars over the um, the original project that was somebody else's project. That we understood, I think we had no problem with that. The problem here is now enlarging the scope of the project and the contract. Um, so I'm using the money even if we don't need to, and there may be some other thing that we would rather have it used for. Uh, so there's, a, there's also a so I've been, I've been, I've been last year, so I don't know any mm -hmm. chance of passing you. Right. But I, I do remember specifically that the parking lot is in very bad shape. So unless you fix the parking lot, nobody can park there. This uh, is the parking lot for the affordable housing units? For, it's a, it's a house taken and converted into, uh, uh, converted into affordable housing unit. We get one credit for each bedroom in the house. So that's the most economical way of uh, satisfying our requirements. Is the so parking lot shared with the church or is it just for the building? Yeah, I, I think originally there was some issue, I just remember a long time ago about paving and liquidity paving church parking lot and this area where the house is. It would be in any paving of the limited to just where the house is, but I, it's not, it's, it, oddly enough, I didn't see it um, on these uh, page after page of, of um, what they're doing. And if, it, the if they're doing something within here, I don't think there's a problem. I think the problem is going beyond this repair stuff. Yeah, because right now the total seems it's two, um, 292, 525, which is what was it, which leaves not a little less than 3,000. Yeah, it's not much, much, much. But about that, about that number is page. Well, that, that was the original. It's reserve. There's a reserve of approximately 5% for unseen, unseen damages. damages. Let's say there aren't any unseen damages. I mean, a lot of times you find things you start taking the sheep off, all sorts of stuff. But let's say there's $14,875 for, for that. Um, that really, like to me, was going to come back to the Google Housing Trust Fund, not, not to the other things that they may have right. to so, outside of building. So even assuming this repair scope is perfect, and it looks like this, this, this looks like it's an estimate. I'm not sure what it's based on. It's not, it's not a bid from a company. It's, it's basically there as uh, something I can do right here. But um, you have the 14,000, so if there's nothing, that's a problem. This almost 15,000 dollars would be left, and then there was also an addition. Um, there was an additional couple thousand dollars in here, I think, that was um, also kind of come out. So if we're looking at something like could be, I think, it's fifteen to seventeen thousand dollars. Well, assuming everything here is correct, now it may turn out that some of these are under numbers, and that they needed to swap back and forth because something went up in price and something went else went down in price or whatever. It comes out to the same amount. I don't have a problem. It's going beyond. The scope of what we have approved at the issue, and that's and that's what this amendment seems to allow. Right? And I do apologize that we said that last minute. Yeah, I mean, so we just you know we're, we're thinking about looking at a little bit more detail and see not send it at all and bring it up, but send it at the last minute so it can be seen. I mean, the same 
my unsaid lawyer will say, I don't know all the projects in detail. You can pull it or you can ask questions that show them if it's something you like. I don't know answers to all your questions. And I can not even have time to talk to Sam about what the, what the reasons for these is. If we were to delay this until we could get some answers to so next time, would that, be, would that hurt anything? That, even that, I don't know. I don't think it's an issue. in the process, and usually we don't, we don't do that. You should come back and here's an agreement. The problem is, you no. Know, so sometimes not, they no, do. No, you know, this, you know, is this is not asking you to approve the agreement. This is asking you to allow the mayor and clerk to sign the agreement. If you look at 2020 R127, it's exactly the same thing. Authorizing mayor and clerk, executive professional services agreement with that engineer. There's no different than what is being done here. And, and there are. She had the contract in front of us. Like, we how authorize you to do that? We have we have the contract in right. front of us. We don't have the contract in front of us. Is all I'm saying. So, I and, in my, I and I know that they want to start July 13th, and that's our, our next meeting. So I understand the logistics of this. I understand this. The GIF, I don't know if the GIFs completed its work on what it would require in this agreement. GIFs are involved in this, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and we're, we, they have looked at the uh, insurance, the uh, insurance requirements, and they are agreeing with the insurance requirements. Right. It does, that, as I wrote in the email, the whatever the GF contract agreement is, it's not up for discussion because GF is going to defend the township in case somebody sues us. So I cannot change because somebody doesn't like the word or doesn't like the word. If you don't feel comfortable, uh, don't let we won't open the pool. It's yeah. as simple as that. Because so this is really agreeing with the idea of doing it. We're not agreeing with the idea of doing it, and that's really what we're going. And, and the idea of doing it is framed very. It, it, it's framed in accordance with the. State Department of Health right. guidelines, which were issued shortly after the governor's executive order. Right. So the professionals have been working very diligently on getting this all together so that the township can lessen the financial impact of not opening the pool at all this summer. Right. So between the requirements of the state and the requirements of right and the requirements of the insurance company, it's going to be whatever it is. They're all going to agree that it is what it is. And, and our, our insurance company will defend the township. Right. See, they said in their four or five different bodies where we have there's a US Civil Association who has their own guidelines and requirement. And that we can follow that, so we are not opening on behalf of the township, but we are, we are not liable. The swim teams are agreeing to use it at the own risk 
the agreement says so, okay. and they are willing to do that. That's okay. this that will really you. the last is our opinion. Right. That's what I was just going to say. Okay. Yeah. So well, there are also COVID nineteen um, prevention plans that the township is prepared for sign off by our health department, and likewise the swim teams have submitted their will be submitting their plans to the township. So I have a question, the document itself says, whereas the township has negotiated a facility rental use agreement for swim team use by then this is the four people, do we have one? We? Because we're voting that we have negotiated already the contract. We, we, two of those teams have been using the pool for a number of years. So we have always, always used that contract in previous years in which Yes, it was an application that will do COVID 19. So we have shown the contract to Jeff. And this was prepared in the hopes that we would have everything worked out between now and tonight. Right. And with all of everyone's best efforts, it's reduced to paper. And we have to get the agreements executed by the respective swim teams along with non-refundable checks for made out to the West Windsor Township pool utility. If so and we, we, you know, it's a matter of do you, do you want to minimize the economic loss yeah. that the township is going to incur if it doesn't open the pool at all, right? Or are you going to allow four swim teams who have expressed interest in using it in accordance with these guidelines to lessen the impact yeah. financially? Yeah, I mean, we're going to lose money no matter what. This will help us so that we lose less money. Come on, um, you want to go Yeah, like, I think one issue that Mike and Linda have is that we're saying it was done, and as Marlena points out, this was written when we thought it would be done. If we just change this to the township is negotiating a facility, would that make it satisfy people? But I think it's just either way. Yeah, I don't want to follow something I know is not true. Right, so would that, would that work? I think that would work. Yeah, is negotiating. Well, yeah, because that way we're not saying we're voting on. That's right. Yes. Yeah, so if we change the tents higher, I don't know if there's another place. That's the one point that I think. So, do you want to put a amendment um, to just say that the township is negotiating to fill the facilities when it's not work for everybody? I'll make a motion to say that the township is negotiating a facility. Is that work? Second. Okay, and when these contracts are eventually signed, you can count on four. It's all for all four, but in order to drop out. This will be such a big time. It's going to be a tiny little bit over. Period. And will you send us three? Once you get the contracts, you send it to us to send it to us. I have sent that too. I'll send it, but it's not negotiated. No, I know. I mean, it's, it's just for general knowledge. Cause yeah, I mean, that's fine. I mean, I don't want to. So you're approving a contract, you have to see. Well, but we're going to see the contract. Motion to introduce. Second. 
Collins? Yes. Beavers? Yes. Mandel? Yes. Stevens? Yes. Manzari? Yes. Public hearing will be at the July 27th, 2020 meeting. Excellent. Additional public comment. Anybody at home wish to speak at this time? If you wish to Yes, I would like to say something. Uh, meeting online it does help. However, it's not, it's not a really a very good substitute for us to be there. And uh, get the back and forth with the Mr. Charge, Mr. Charge, you have to stay close or we're missing. We lost your middle sentence. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, stay close. Okay. Uh, yes. Just wondering if you have any guidance from the governor at all as to whether the car had to be used by the company. It's pretty frustrating for us. Mr. Church, I believe you're asking when we're going to go back to having public at our meetings. We're hoping to start that back in July with the lifting. Oh, we're, we're hoping to do that at starting at the July 13th meeting as long as nothing changes. The governor increased today uh, the indoor capacity. Um, so we are already ready to set up and hopefully start on July 13th with the council meetings. They will be moved to the senior center, however, so that everybody will have the proper social distancing. Okay. Hey, John, there's a, there's a young person uh, planning for meeting on July 8th at the senior center. You're welcome to come. Yes. That's the only person in the public allowed to come in. Tonight, 7 p.m. Anyone else wish to speak? Thank you, Mr. Church. We miss you too, by the way. Okay. Yeah. I'll be the first one to say that. Excuse me. Um, hello, my name is Michael Dickens. Michael Dickens. So I live in three York Town Court. Um, I would just like to ask a question. Do you guys have a or will you provide a transcript of the meeting as it's unfortunate that the quality of the connection is a little poor. Uh, all, these, all the township council meetings are actually live streamed so you can go out on the township website tomorrow and it'll be uploaded so you can see uh, it either through YouTube or within a couple of days uh, there will also be a video put up uh, that is being done as well. And the audio is typically much, much better for those. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak? Okay, hearing none, um, going on to council reports. Um, Mike, how about you? you have anything? Uh, the Parks Commission has been meeting talking about uh, what we can open and when we can open it and how we can open it. Uh, the day camps have come up. Uh, there's currently a proposal that we're looking at to uh, have a, a limited number of day camps open. Um, we're currently uh, looking for uh, directors and counselors to oversee the children that are in the camps. Um, that's online and I think it's on the uh, website for the Parks Commission as well. So if you have anyone who's interested who uh, wants to participate in that, please um, submit an application. Yeah, they have opened the day camps for basketball and color guard. Those are the two like songs. Yeah, that's, that's 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 just going to be drills. Not yeah, right. Right. But right. so that's an important part of the game. That is an important part of the game. They have to. They have been practicing that for a while. Then there are also a number of uh, virtual camps that are open for chess and uh, other activities. That's also on the website. Great. Okay. So did you have anything else? Um, yes. From the, um, I met with. The parking authority um, on June 10th, virtually, and they have been having a lot of discussions on what to do and how to um, bring in some revenue because they have been going getting uh, going through a lot of losses. 
um, as of right now for um, New Jersey Transit Permits, um, they have a, approximately 18% of suspensions. They haven't heard anything back from about 7%, so they're running off of 75%, which is better than what they were expecting. Um, for the West Windsor Law Permit, they won't know anything about the renewals, um, and, but, okay, I believe, up until August because they had given, and, but, okay, I believe, up until August because they had given three months credit. So we'll know about that in a couple of months to see how that moves. They are trying to um, be creative and working on different ideas to um, rent out the lot to see if we can bring in uh, more revenue. Ninth, and as since then, the virtual graduation happened on June 19, which was actually if anybody get, got a chance to take a look at it. It was really nice and done. All the videos uh, were really well done. The speeches were really there were some really good speeches for by our students. Um, that was really um, nice. So don't have to go into details about that. But but the education is doing all virtual camps. The extended summer school year is also virtual, which starts on July 6th and goes through August 7th. Um, food distribution will continue through the summer for um, the Sunshine families. Um, counseling and nursing support will um, be available on the reduced hours through the summer. Um, this week, um, there will be uh, device exchanges happening um, throughout the school district. Um, the only grades that are actually exchanging or returning their devices is Chromebooks. Our fifth grades, eighth grades, and our seniors, or and or um, students who are leaving the district. Everybody else continue to keep their devices with them through the summer, unless something breaks and they need an exchange. The district also sent out this week a survey to all the families, all the parents, um, to get an understanding of where the parents stand so they can plan accordingly for fall to see if they can actually open in person or if you'll hopefully not virtual or a combination of um, both. So they're trying to figure out many scenarios based on where we stand um, and how. Um, and how many percentage of families are comfortable sending their students home. Because there's a lot of things that they have to look at. Transportation is the biggest problem. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah. Um, hopefully, um, I urge all our parents to fill in that survey so it gives a good idea to the board to make a decision on schooling for all, and they need to do it. The plan needs to be done now. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. I think there's also a celebratory flyover. There was a celebratory flyover, um, which was really nice. There were um, parade. There was about 100 car parade that happened between Westminster and Bainsboro. So giving a salute to all our seniors. Um, what was um, there was um, this week? Um, all the seniors actually got a chance to go to the school. Um, they had scheduled different times for them to go and take professional pictures on stage. So that was really nice as well. So that there, there were many different ways of um, celebrating our seniors that happened, which again goes down the street. Nobody ever got that like, this kind of graduation. Yeah. So you know, years down the line, everybody graduates. I right? graduated in 2020. <laughs> this, uh, this group of students would have that to say. Yes. I did see the plane. I, I didn't know what was happening, and I think somebody texted me, and I ran outside, and there it was. There was a post that I saw that there were 100 balloons that were missing. And there was also a This is sort of like the biggest graduation in terms of all the things that have been done in the district. There's so many different, different ways. Yeah. And I know our township as well has um, the bulletin board. The bulletin board, uh, the, the digital bulletin board has uh, been displaying the names <coughs> right now. King Jacobs. It's a sad day to be nice to everyone. This has got to be the longest record. Be long. You know, it reminds me of my kids 
birthdays, which like a birthday turned into like a birth week or a yeah. birth month with all the various celebrations with right. different family members and friends. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I participated in um, the various conferences this weekend because in my family, a bunch of students were graduating um, from high school, graduating from middle school, graduating from elementary. Yeah. One of them is my kid. So I haven't been a middle schooler. That's exciting. That's exciting. So turn here. It's fine. Which will be a problem with him. But the next year, when my younger one goes to middle school, that will be okay. Yeah. That will be okay. All right. Did you have anything? Uh, yeah, the environmental commission actually held its first uh, Zoom meeting since COVID started. So I guess the March meeting was canceled. March, April, May, so June was the first one. And uh, they discussed the press release for the Bring Your Own Bag Education Project, and they're going to be doing uh, research on what can be done to make musical bags safer by uh, choosing the correct material, the correct bag design, and also how to clean the measure. And uh, I think tonight we just uh, so the ten, got the ten thousand dollar grant, and tonight we just put it into the budget. So yeah, that's fantastic. It's really hard work on that. Good at this. Yeah, I also want to extend uh, the congratulations to you. Uh, high school seniors who have just graduated and good luck with your, with your future plans. We go off to college, I, I hope that goes well. Yes, well, I'm going to tell them that we're going through right now. Anyway, um, that's planning board's May 27th meeting. It's by Zoom. The uh, board approved a lot line adjustment two existing residential properties located at 28 and 32 North Mill Road. Uh, the board then went on to approve a sign waiver for a tenant sign to go on and approve to three-story office buildings on the rear portion of 19 Roswell Road. And the board uh, finally approved um, a, well, we held a courtesy review of phase one site work at High School South at the post Parking lot expansion increases parking spaces from 296 to 305 and improves traffic safety by separating parent drop or pick up traffic uh, using a traffic medium. On June 10th, uh, the board reviewed ordinance 2020 and 2012 and 13 compliance or being consistent with the master plan. Uh, the board's next meeting will be July 8th at the Westminster Senior Center. Members of the public will be allowed uh, to attend in person. And this is the plan uh, for now. The board, um, starting July 1st, to use the main room at the Senior Center for planning board meetings. So next plan board meeting July 8th at the Senior Center. You, you can go to it. Great, thank you. Yeah. I just want to add my congratulations to all the seniors and all the other kids moving up to new schools. I um, just want to remind everybody to go uh, get your free COVID testing tomorrow at the park and just remind everybody to drive safely and follow the speed limits and all the other um, laws out there. It has been a little bit like the Wild West on some of the roads out there. So now that more and more people are getting out there, please be safe. Um, administration updates. I have no. There. I just want to remind you just thank you for testing for Tomorrow, 8 to 12, right? And um, I have been told that we need to have a closed session. So, uh, how can we do that under circumstances? You got a motion to go into closed. We're going to second. Now, I'll read the statement, then I'll shut everything off. And we're going to end here with closed. Okay. Okay. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? So moved. Second. second. And it's for potential litigation. Oh, uh, whereas in JSA 10 4, 12 allows, oh sorry, we need more. <laughs> oh yes, Allows. Yes. yes, Cheever, yes, Mandel, yes, Evans, yes, Mandel, yes. We're not going to try to Whereas in JSA 10 4, 4 12 allows for a public body to go into closed session during the public meeting. Whereas the Township Council, Westminster Township, has deemed it necessary to go into closed session to discuss certain matters which are exempted from the public, and whereas the regular meeting of this Township Council will reconvene, and whereas the below stated subject matter shall be made available at such time as the issues discussed therein are resolved, and its disclosure would not subvert any particular exception for convening a closed session, 
Now, therefore, be resolved that the Township Council of the Township of West Windsor will go into closed session for the following reason as outlined in NJSA 10-4-12 for the discussion of potential litigation. That ends the public portion of our Township Council meeting for June 22nd, 2020.